Yo. So um, seeing as I'm making all these videos lately, um, more about audio and stuff, but I'm going to broaden it eventually to a lot of 3D and art stuff that I do. And I thought this would be a good opportunity because I got a message asking about how I went about making the can uncrushed thing. So I thought um, I'll make a, a video on it just about how I um, went about making that. It's not going to be a full tutorial because I've already made it and I don't have time to make that all again. It didn't, didn't take that long actually, but um, I just thought I'd go a quick overview of things I, I did to, to make it happen and hopefully um, it can help anyone else as well. So the model is just a basic model. Um, I won't get into modeling in this video, but um, you can see here it's just got a lot of smooth on. So if I turn the wireframe on, you can see there's just a lot of smooth details going on. So if I turn that off, you know, you can see it's pretty ugly. Um, so I'll turn it back on. And um, I've got the ring pool models, a separate mesh, and this little whatever that's called. Um, separate as well, and I didn't I didn't really rig that. I just moved the pivot to the side so I can just rotate that down and animate the ring pool going in. Um, I've skinned this one. I didn't really have to skin it, but I just did. I don't know why. Um, I've got that skin to a bone, so I just moved the bone to you know move move that, and that's all uh, linked to these uh, controllers I've got. Um, which are, they're just boxes, so they're not bones or anything. You can use bones to skin things with. I mean, you can use any, you can use geometry and helpers and all that sort of stuff to, 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 to skin. You can skin things to, uh, things other than bones. That's what I'm trying to say. So, um, I use boxes a lot just because bones have a lot of weird constraints that sort of, they can be funny sometimes. Um, and geometry or things things like that is really simple and because this is a really simple scene it avoids all those complications that might come up so I just use boxes um, and I've just on here you can see on the skin modifier so I've just skinned skin the bottom one uh, here's the weights so I've just used default envelopes I think because it's it's a lot easier just to get a nice skinning straight out of the box and uh, with that I'm able to just uh, I've just added three boxes to, to deform the can and I can just bend it you know to how I like it's not it's not skin the greatest because it, you know it was just a test but I thought that this was enough to do what I wanted I wanted to do so you know you see you can see that little bend inside see that bends not very good so you can you know bend it a little bit like this and then you can use the position tool to sort of position it some other way you like but Obviously, you run the risk of losing the volume uh, of the can because obviously a can can't do that because, you know. So I'll just leave it, but um, it, it, that's all I wanted to do. So um, that's the, the skinny. Oh, I think I've got one. Yeah, so I've got this one controller down here, which is, I think it's just the root. So that's where all the, the boxes or the, the, the bone helpers are linked to. So it's like you can just move everything uh, based on that. Uh, and that's. That's the rigging. It's just really, really simple. I'll show you that just with the animation. So if I go here, this is the uh, let's change that there. This is the animation, obviously, with nothing going on. Yep, just nice and simple. Um, so you can see as he as as the can starts to unform, I just keep I just hand keyframed these things. By the way, um, so just pops up you know pops up one and then that's when you know some of the can crush goes away and then the next the next thing you'll see the ring pull starts to move as well and it sort of flips up and closes closes the ring pull bit so I'll go this view might show it better yeah see that it sort of stops that one and then the last one I think he builds up a little bit of anticipation and then just pops into it so it goes pop yeah so he goes wiggles a little bit pop and that's um so that's the uh, animation side uh, but you can see here when I turn the can it's just the default skin to mesh that's bending so it doesn't look very uh, cr crushed yet uh, so what I did was I just looked at a lot of reference of crushed cans I think I even had some empty bloody scotch and coke can or something so I just crushed it looked at it and it's the easiest way to do it um well I tried drawing one at first and it just didn't 
like I drew heaps and tried to draw it in and it just it took too long and it didn't really look that good. In the end, I went with a procedural map generated in, in Max itself. I'll show you a, a few ways you can do it actually. So uh, if you go into your maps and here's the, the final texture I ended up with. So it's just a blend, um, blah, 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 but I'll talk about that later. Um, so here's the displacement map that I used. So it's a mixture of a cellular map and a gradient map to mask off the areas that I don't want to displace basically. And I just composited those together and I'll show you one way. So I'll, sh I'll put it in the, um, I will put it on the mesh itself so you can see it. So if I add a displace modifier, I'll chuck this final map onto it. So put it in the maps. Um, set it down to uh, use existing mapping. Now, if I set the strength, so I'll put the strength inwards, you can see how now it's starting to displace. And it, it looks terrible because you see it's just displacing with the mesh, the underlying mesh. So if I go into underlying mesh and set the iterations around this move um, to two, Sorry, had a visitor, and um, now someone's out there going crazy with their lawnmower, so I can hope that doesn't make it any worse. Anyway, so, <clears throat> what was I? Iterations, yeah, so my iterations are only set to two, so you can see the little jaggedy, jaggedy edges there. Um, if I get wireframe, see the mesh is really, it's not very dense, so if I raise that, it'll smooth it out a bit. Um, but obviously, you know, you have to increase the segments. So, you know, that, you can see the map, it's still, it's, it's not the, it's not even the best looking map to begin with. See, these edges are a bit, you know, I could work on it a lot more. See this bit in here, that, these bits look cool. See there, that, that's what I was going for, this sort of indent bit and these bits here. Um, so, you know, in a perfect world, I'd go in and I'd smooth all these out. I'll, you know, make these edges more creased and, you know, make, make it a better looking map from the procedural one. Um, but for what I needed to do, that, that was good enough. Um, but what I do, I, I tend not to do it in, on the mesh itself, turn the displace off. So what I do is I'll go into the materials and, uh, I'll give this material, I'll just get another arc and design material. Um, I'll chuck that on him. Now... Actually, I'll go to the first frame. So I'll go here and I'll do a quick render to show that, you know, it's just a, um, that's what it looks like without displacement. Now, when I go into the material, um, I realized that when I did it, uh, I couldn't just chuck the displacement map uh, on the mesh because I don't think that looked very good. I'll, I'll do a quick test. This is all just coming back to me because like when I did it, it was, it was like, God, back in 2013, I think when I did it. Yeah, see that looks a bit sus. And there was a reason why I didn't do that. Um, can't remember what it is now, but uh, what I ended up doing was when I got the maps together, I, I put this one here called a 3D, 3D displacement map. So if you just right click, get maps, uh, mental ray, this one works with mental ray. And as years ago, I think I use Corona render now, which Corona is a really good renderer, really quick, really realistic. So um, I recommend using that. But if you go here, 3D displacement, then you know you can make that map and you just chuck it into the extrusion part. And then in this MR connection down here, which just stands for mental ray connection, you've got another little, um, I'll go down here, you've got another sort of, uh, you got another displacement map in the mental ray connection. So what I'll do is I'll untick this, this lock. So now it's available and I'll drag the 3D displacement into the mental ray connection displacement. And then I'll give that a little render and see what that looks like. All right. So that looks more like what we put on the mesh before and you can see it's still you know it's still not very it's still not that good because that's all that's doing is see if you go into 
uh, the render settings and you go to renderer you go to the renderer settings yeah so here you got displacement and you can change these values to get different different effects so see it's max level six and you scroll over that tells you what it does so it basically just subs subdivides the mesh um, similarly to what you would do uh, in the mesh itself so you know you can just do do a whole bunch of different things until you get you know the right effect you want so that's how I got the displacement map and the settings like I said the setting I just did them really quick like it didn't it didn't didn't phase me too much so you can probably tweak the settings and get a like a really good value that you like but in here in the cellular map uh, so I'll bring that up uh, just so you can see the settings that I've used so here's the cellular map uh, with these settings so I've set it to chips different size spread blah 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 blah, blah. um yeah so I've just tiled it a bit you know changed a few different things and, and I, I just experimented until it looked like something I want with this map here, um, this one, this one's just basically, um, it's making it soft. So if I chuck this into the diffuse map here, you'll see here where I UV, where I UV unwrapped it, all the black is masking the, the displacement map. So the black on where I've, I've went in manually into this gradient ramp and I've adjusted it. So if I, um, if I wanted it more to show up on the bottom, I would um add another add another notch, and I would set that to black. So therefore, if I move all this up, you know, I can I can sort of bring the displacement, you know, stop the displacement from being down or down where that belt black is at the bottom of the can. What I did was I just wanted to mask. I just wanted only this this gradient cellular to show up where the white where the white is on my model so I just added a composite map I just dragged the cellular displacement map into layer 1 and dragged the gradient ramp into layer 2 and set set it as a multiplier so that all the black will show up and all the white will be transparent basically so it'll show here you can see in the map you can see that the displacement shows where the white is of my mask that I made and that's I'll just chuck that into um, the displacement map through that and so you can see as I animated it into its little stages of, of um, you know, decrushing, um, it'll start off in here. I think I animated, I just animated the extr extrusion strength. So here's 1.5. So what I've done is basically I started at zero, at minus two. And then as the stage one comes, I've just keyframed it to, uh, keyframed it down. As you see there, keyframed it down to 1.5. Then the next stage, it keyframes down to one. Then it keyframes down a bit more as it's as it's doing that. It sort of decrushes it more and then pops back to zero, and it's got no displacement. So that's basically you know you just animate it, animate it by hand. Obviously, you can set up controls if you want to say when the bone when the bone turns this far, the displacement map kind of shows up that far. But that's just getting way way in more in depth than I needed at, at the time so um, and for something that I didn't even really use for anything I just did it because I was bored one afternoon uh, but anyway with the material um, so this is the actual material I'll, I'll chuck that on in here so you can see I've um, got this little coca-cola map and I'm pretty sure I just where did I get that from uh, this one. So I just downloaded that somewhere off the internet. So here's my little UV map. So it can. See, so there you go. So it just goes up to, um, you know, it's around the, the edges and then the top bit's just grey. I just left that because I think I'm just using the material as a, as a like a brush metal for that. I used a multi uh, sub material. If I go here and I can go select select by ID, select ID 1, you'll see that only the top and the bottom of the can select because the ID 1 is metal and if I go 2, select ID, you can see that the label is ID 2. Um, what that means is in here I just put the label into, I made the sub material, put the label into 2 and the metal into 1 and it'll just go to the right spot. Um, I also made a little bump, I made like a little um, 
bump map texture, which I just did in Photoshop. Uh, so you can see here, you can see these little lines I put there as well. Just I looked at a can really closely in the light. It might have been that one can. I don't, I don't know if they all do it, but I noticed these tiny little lines that you can see um, that create a little highlight bump. And I just sort of, you know, use this whole thing um, just for a little bit of difference. Um, and it seemed effective enough. Um, yeah, but that's that's about it. I mean, I could do a, such a better now. And looking at it now, about the how I did the displacement and everything, I'm um, thinking, geez, I could have done such a better job of that displacement map. So maybe I'll um, do another one at some point and uh, see how that goes. But uh, you know, for now, you know, little can crushing, eh? Anyway, there's probably so much. There's probably heap that heaps I haven't mentioned or talked about. Um, just let me know if there's anything else I can help you with, and I hope that helps in any way at all. And thanks for watching.